Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to be speaking about the USMLE Step 2 CK. I've spoken about my experience, scores, and all of the other things in another video. So if you haven't watched that yet, please check that out. This video is purely for the resources. To make this easy, I have divided my prep into four phases. The major difference between preparing for step one and step two resource wise is that there is no proper textbook for step two. Because in step one, we've got first aid as a proper book for step one. But in step two, there is no such resource. If you ask me what is the gold standard resource for step two CK, I'd say it's UWorld. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is that they start UWorld and they don't get a good percentage in it and they feel really demotivated about it. And I completely understand that it can be very demoralizing, but I want you to know that U World is a learning tool. Do not use it to test yourself, especially the first pass of U World. It's purely for learning. Get even a 30%, it's fine. But you need to make sure you're learning from the explanations. So, what you should do, there's always like U World first pass and U World second pass. So, U World first pass is when you do the whole thing for the first time, and second pass is when you do it for the second time. So, while doing your first pass, make sure you're reading the explanation under each and every question clearly. Because the whole point of using UWorld as a learning tool is to not just know why your answer is correct or why the other answer is wrong, but to also find out all the extra information given under the explanation for each of the options. So take your time with the first pass. It may seem like you're doing very less per day and that's completely fine. And UWorld is a lot, so don't beat yourself up if you're scoring low and if you're not able to do a lot of questions per day because this is something that takes time because I remember when I just started UWorld I used to be able to do only 10 questions per day towards the end of my first pass I was easily able to do around 40 questions since then these were even higher in second pass which I will get to in a bit while doing UWorld first pass I used Anki and I also supplemented this with online medit videos I went system wise let's say I started with cardiology so on a typical day I would do around 20 cardiology questions and go through all the explanations line by line and if there's something Something that I didn't know and I had to remember, I'd make a flashcard for it. And if I came across some concept that I did not understand, I'd go and watch online medit videos for them. You'll watch a video and right below the video there's a discussion. Many people post their doubts over there, people try to answer that and help them out. And there's a lot of discussion that goes on under each video. So I feel that is also super helpful because you're not only just consuming information from the video, you're also able to get different perspectives and some of these doubts are stuff you may not have even thought about before. Since someone brought it up, you learned a new thing. So that's one more thing that I like about online med ed videos. I initially thought of watching all their videos, but then I realized it wasn't required. So I just watched it for the topics that I found hard. And another super important resource is the pre-made flashcards by Anking. I will link that in the description. I think they were like around 17,000 or 20,000 flashcards. They were like a lot but they were all super duper helpful. It gives you a quick review of the things you even studied for step one. I took step one in October 2019. So most of my step two prep was done during the pandemic. Uh, this is when the pandemic just began, right? So in 2020, my classes used to start around 5.30 in the morning and would end around 12 or one in the afternoon. And then I'd have lunch and after lunch, I would complete my flashcards, do the pre-made flashcards and also finish 20 UL questions with explanations. And after that, I would study for my university exams. So this is what a typical day looked like during my UWorld first pass. After finishing UWorld first pass, I did AMBOSS. AMBOSS is also a wonderful question bank. So the AMBOSS Q bank has different hammered questions. So the one hammer questions are like super easy and the five hammer questions are like the toughest ones. So if you do not have time to do the entire Q bank, I highly recommend doing at least the four and five hammer questions of AMBOSS. I kept going through my old flashcards and doing AMBOSS and I was still watching videos for the topics I found hard to remember. So that is what I was doing in this second phase of my prep. And since a lot of step one content is also being tested on step two now, there was a lot of pharmacology and pathophysiology, which I had to go over once more. So if you want to know what videos and resources I used for that, make sure you take a look at this video. It has all the resources I used for the topics that I found hard. 
after completing UVL first pass, I completed AMBOSS and then after that, I went to UVL second pass. Now UVL second pass, this is when you can do questions super quickly because you're not going to be making any flashcards right now. You're not going to be taking any notes right now. So all you have to focus on is getting through questions. Now this is when you can start testing yourself. Try to see if you're able to complete the questions on time. Try to see why you're making mistakes. This is when you can use UVL as a testing tool so in this I was able to do at least like 40 to 80 questions per day some people were also able to do close to 100 so it just depends on you and the amount of time you can dedicate for your preparation but try at least 40 in one sitting because you will know if you're able to manage your time properly you'll be able to know if you're reading questions properly under the time pressure so all of that matters so, so try to time yourself and try to do at least 40 questions a day and like I mentioned before, you're not going to be taking a lot of notes this time. So it's going to be quicker. And if you feel you're still getting questions wrong, you can watch videos, try to understand why you're making that mistake. While doing UVL second pass, I was also doing the flashcards by Anking and also my own flashcards. The fourth and final phase of my prep was purely used for testing myself. This is when I used NBMEs. Now the NBME has two separate kinds of tests for step two. You have the clinical mastery series known as CMS and you have your normal NBME clinical self-assessment forms. CMS consists of six forms for each of the following subjects. Each form has a set of 50 questions and the cost of each of these forms is about $20. Out of all the forms, I believe forms 5 and 6 of each of these subjects are the most relevant. So even if you don't have time to do the older forms, it's completely fine. But make sure you do form 5 and 6. So those forms were really good for me to test myself and to understand what exactly my weaknesses were closer to the exam. Then comes the usual NBME self-assessments. These are very similar to the ones in step one. This was the case last year. So I think right now there are newer forms 10 and 11. So if you feel NBME 10 and 11 were predictive, please let me know in the comments below. That would be very helpful for other people who are watching this video. So when you think about it, in step 2CK, they ask you questions like screening tests, diagnostic tests, management protocols and things like that. And these are things that keep changing. Because I remember when I took step 2CK, we had to start the colonoscopy screening at the age of 50. But I think maybe a month or two after I took the exam, they changed the screening guidelines in such a way that it would start at the age of 45. So this is why even if you know a particular answer that is valid for today, the QBank may show that it is wrong because the QBank was made way back when the guidelines were different. So this is why the older NBMEs and the older QBanks may not be as useful for step to CK. So make sure you always use the latest QBank and stick to the latest information. And if there's any contradicting information, just go check you world i think around jan or feb that's when i got to know about divine intervention podcast i got to know this super late but they're so 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 helpful i have an entire video on this spoken about the list of important episodes how i use this particular resource and the duration of individual episodes so if you watch that you will know which episodes are important for you and you can sort of understand how much time it will take you to complete it and that way you can plan the thing better so if you choose to use divine intervention podcast do check that video out before you watch them and then i did my ul self-assessment one and self-assessment two so those were all the resources that i used for step 2 ck if you want to check out my usmd step 2 ck exam experience go check this video out and this is my usmd step 2 ck vlog go check that out and if you have any questions regarding this please leave them in the comments i'll be happy to address them thank you for watching and i'll see you next time